I think the best way to answer this is to first talk about uh, underlying philosophy, and that's the idea of crawl, walk, run. So the idea of crawl, walk, run is you need to learn to crawl before you can hope to learn to walk, and then you need to learn to walk before you can hope to run. I have a four month year, four month old daughter. Uh, I can't just like teach her to run, right? She has to go through the steps. So the way that you would write a song and maybe the best way to write a song when you're crawling, when you're a beginner at songwriting or you've never written a song before is going to be very different than how I think is best to write a song later. Um, not that there's one best way, but if, if it's your first song, the easy answer to this is honestly pick a stock chord progression. And I'm anybody who's a songwriter theory follower knows that I, I make fun of the stock chord progression thing, but um, that's only for more seasoned songwriters, right? When you're at the beginning, you don't know how to put together a chord progression. You might have gotten lost when I talked about the whole one chord and five chord, and that may seem overwhelming. Now, if you learn basic music theory, that becomes just second nature to you, and it's not overwhelming. But if you don't know that stuff, then making your own chord progression is going to be a, a difficult slog. It's probably going to not go very well. It will take you too long. So honestly, if it's your first song, just pick a stock chord progression. And what I mean by that is just if you Google something like popular chord progressions, right? So the axis of, of awesome song that like mm -hmm. makes fun of all pop music has the same chord progression. That's, that's, that, that's the one, five, six, four chord progression. So going back to when I said one chord and five chord, as far as like that chord progression, that's the one, five, six, four. So in yeah, C major, when I was getting started, I, that video, I used that as inspiration. Like, Oh, I'm going to just write all my songs. <laughs> using this Chord progression. <laughs> Yeah, which is a fine place to start, right? Because uh, that chord progression does work. It will limit you, so long-term, you should probably try to move beyond that. But for your first song, just borrow that chord progression, right? So in C major, that would be C major, G major, A minor, and F major. In G major, if you're a guitarist, that would be G major, D major, E minor, and C major. Just steal that chord progression, uh, which you can't steal chord progressions. Chord progressions can't be uh, copyrighted, but, um, well... Yeah, don't hold me to that, but they can't really be copyrighted, especially those type of yeah, generic I'm pretty ones. Sure, I'm pretty sure they can't be. Yeah, it's more the melody where melody, things yeah. come in and lyrics. But um, just do what's tried and true at first. because And then the goal is to eventually learn some basic music theory so you can write your own chord progressions. Because if you think about it, whenever you pick a stock chord progression, as I'm calling it, or a popular chord progression, you're effectively, you're not writing chord to chord to chord. You're writing just at like your atomic part is the chord progression. But really you can make your own chord progression where you decide to go one, six, three, four. And in that case, you're choosing each chord. But that's something that you graduate into as you learn some basic music theory. So you understand things like in C major, the notes I have are C, D, E, F, G, A, B. The chords I have are C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, and then don't ever use a B diminished, but that technically is there. Um, and then eventually you sort of just keep building. But for your first song, stock chord progression, I would also recommend do a four chord song, which is a song that the entire song is built off of one chord progression. So don't write a pre-chorus, make it easy on yourself. Just decide verse, chorus, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, or verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus. Uh, so you have your one chord progression. And then if you chose to just have verses in a chorus, you need to write two melodies. If you decided to have a bridge, you need to write three melodies, but all on top of that same chord progression. And then eventually write your lyrics, which uh, we don't have time to dive into all the nuances there. But um, another thing I recommend on that you have this beautiful tool called a phone and a mistake people make. And probably your listeners don't need this as much because they're already recording. But I know this is the thing I have to talk to my listeners about a lot where it's like, man, you know, what's way easier for figuring out a melody. If I record the music I wrote, let's say it's a piano riff or a guitar chord progression, just record it on your phone. It doesn't need to be high quality and have yourself repeat it for like two minutes or three minutes it's way easier for me to improvise and write a melody when I can listen back to my chord progression. That way I don't have to think about strumming my chord progression and improvising a melody. I only have to think about one thing. I'm just listening to what I already mm -hmm. wrote and I'm improvising to write my melody, which if you're a singer is the best way probably to write a melody early on. But I think later, later it, it changes. 
Uh, Because the way I write songs is almost completely different now than what I just described. But that's because uh, I'm not crawling anymore. Um, But uh, understand where you're at and write from where you're at. That's really good. Yeah, one thing I like to do is I'll create in my DAW the MIDI for all the different chords in the scale. And then I'll chop them up so it's all they're all their own little piece. And I just move the pieces Mm -hmm. around and just find something that sounds good to create my chords. I don't know if that's a good strategy or not. So when you say all the chords, and are you talking about triads specifically? So you'll yeah, just like, triads. Uh, and then once I find something I like, I'll I'll spice them up a little bit. So, oh, that's but, interesting, uh, huh? Yeah, yeah. And then there, so and then let's see. So I mean, I don't know. You have you have this awesome lyric checklist here. So I don't know mm-hmm. if you want to just give a quick yeah talk on how I mean, what's what's your mindset, what's your approach to to writing lyrics. Oh, I just remember one thing I was going to mention with the phone was really good. Yeah. Was that's what I do too, is a lot of times I'll get melody ideas and I'll just like mm-hmm. record myself humming it or doing la la la's or something. And then what you can do in your DAW is you can then like later when you're able to record, like record yourself singing that into your mic. Right. If you don't know, right. If you can, like for me, I can like hum, hum it a melody, but I don't yeah. know what all the notes are. So what I can do is I'll yeah. record it into my microphone. Then you can convert MIDI or you can convert audio to MIDI. So you see all the oh. MIDI notes for what you're, that's melody it. is right. um there's they're going to be the timing is going to be off the velocity is going to be like down but you just sure. kind of just clean it up and then you got your melody right there in your doll so um yeah. that's a great so, yeah that's a great way to do cool things for there. sure Hey, if you want more help producing professional quality music from home or finishing more music faster, then be sure to grab my rapid song finishing checklist in the description below or go to orpheusaudioacademy.com slash mixing checklist. Inside, you'll discover the proven step-by-step mixing system for creating radio-worthy music from home. You'll discover this one crucial step that you need to do before mixing to get high-quality mixes. You'll learn a proven step-by-step step mixing order so you'll know what to do first second and third so you're not caught chasing your tail and constantly remixing and remixing and maybe making things sound worse over time and you'll discover how to quickly master your music for consistent radio worthy results every time again this is all inside of a free guide you can get in the description below or go to orpheusaudioacademy.com slash mixing checklist that being said if you want some more awesome music production tips and tricks then be sure to click the video on the screen right now that'll take you to another great video to help you make better music with that have an awesome day and keep creating